Hello, this is the Watch Dog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Spectin Zone SP009 1 homage to Tag Heuer Monaco. Let's start out with the wrist check. I'm wearing a San Martin YN55A pilot's watch, a Flieger Type B, and Gregor is wearing my Cadison C7053 homage to Tissot. I told Grogu that Fun With Watches hit 666 subscribers last week. He said that's how many people were invited to the last banquet Princess Leia held. It was the number of the feast. Alright, let's take a look at the watch. It comes with this, in this Specked and Sewn box with a pillow. And it just comes with this unsigned warranty card. And that was it. And here it is. I like Tag Heuer watches and own an aqua racer because I prefer dive style watches to chronographs. However, Tag Heuer is known more for their auto racing heritage. Their most famous line is the Monaco line. When they were just Heuer, Steve McQueen wore a Monaco in the film Le Mans which gave the watch some serious cred. That actual watch sold recently at auction for $2.2 million which is the record for a Heuer. Not being able to afford the $5,000 plus dollars for a real Monaco, I've been wanting to review an homage. Unfortunately, every homage I've seen on AliExpress were actually fakes because you could see the Tag Heuer logo on the customer review photos. Now recently I saw this Spectin Stone watch and since I had unboxed a Spectin Stone before, I knew it wasn't one of those fake placeholder brands like Age Girl. But just to be sure, I reached out to the seller and verified there would be no Tag Heuer name or logo anywhere. There were a few different colorways, and blue would have matched what Mr. McQueen wore, but I chose the one with the golf racing stripes because I prefer the look. If I ever do buy another Tag Heuer, I would probably buy the Golf Formula 1, which is much cheaper than the Golf Monaco, but has the same color scheme. Some of the colorways show a bottom second hand, but specify a VK64 movement, which implies that the bottom second hand is a dummy hand, as they would require a VK63. So another reason I chose this colorway is not to have a dummy hand. I really don't like non-functioning props on my watches. The watch is 38.5 millimeters if you measure at the bezel, 47.3 millimeters lug to lug, 15 millimeters thick, has a 22 millimeter lug width, and weighs 121 grams on the supplied leather strap, which is pretty heavy for a strap watch. The bezel is a brushed steel that has curves on the side and flat top and bottom. Unlike most racing themed chronographs, there is no tachymeter. There's no tachymeter on the Monaco either. The dial has a sunburst effect. You can kind of see it. It's kind of hard to see. Then it says specked and sewn on top. And then it says Geneva for Geneva, and I don't know why it does that, because there's nothing to do with Switzerland at all with this watch. And on the bottom is printed the word chronograph. Nothing about the water resistance, it's just your basic 30 meters. Monaco's have these weird applied indices where they're really long at the 1 and the 11 and the 5 and the 7. And kind of short, and then none at all at the threes, at sixes, and nines. I don't know why they even bother. It's kind of pointless. And then it has these loom dots there on the minute track. These are more like the real indices. There are no numerics at all for the indices. And then it has these loom pencil hands, and no loom at all on the chronograph hand, and no loom at all on the subdials. There's a date at the bottom with border being a VK64. The right subdial is a 24 hour indicator. However, the subdial is marked for the actual Monaco as the chronograph's minute counter. This is not a good decision. I, I do not like that at all. I think it should be marked for the actual movement and not what the watch it is homaging. Then the left subdial is the actual minute counter, but it's marked for 30 minutes when it has a 60 minute counter. So you have to multiply everything by two. There is a sign screw down crown. It's got, it doesn't have the letters SP. It's just got the Spectin Stone logo. 
I don't know why we need a screw down crown since it only has 30 meters of water resistance, but it does have good thread action and it does pop nicely. And it, it screws back down just fine. On a real Monaco, the crown is on the left side. This That wasn't going to be possible on the sub $100 homage, especially if leaving the pushers on the right side and the pushers are not screwed down. In case you haven't seen any of my other reviews, here's the VK64 chronograph in action. Just press the top pusher and it starts to chronograph hand. It takes five times a second because it's a mecha quartz. Press it again to stop it and then press the bottom pusher and it does an instant snap back reset and not a fast rewind like some quartz chronographs do. The crystal is a hardened mineral glass and not sapphire. It seems nice and thick. It's domed and sticks up well past the bezel and it has beveled edges. Doesn't seem to have any reflection issues. You can see through it just fine. I really like this crystal. The case is a brush saw the stainless steel with polished lug tops. The case is quite sturdy and heavy. This watch has some serious heft to it. The case back is coarsely brushed and has the Spectrum Sun name and logo. It says Japan movement and gives the 30 meters of water resistance. It is held in by four very tiny screws. Strip a screw when you've ruined the watch. So you might want to take this to a pro to change the battery if you don't feel very comfortable trying to unscrew something this small. The leather strap is sturdy and comfortable and need no, needs no breaking period. This one has little perforation holes. Some other colorways have a crocodile pattern. I prefer the perforations as it seems more like a racing watch. It comes with a sign deployment clasp that pinches against the strap. So you have infinite adjustability. You can move it to wherever you want. You don't have to worry about any strap holes. I really like the clasp. I always recommend a point clasp on leather straps and it's nice that it comes with one. Plus this is not a butterfly and works, works more like a traditional clasp. Here's the watch and my seven and a half inch wrist. I think it looks nice. Once again, it's kind of a thick watch, a little chunky there, but I really like this clasp and I think the strap looks nice and it's comfortable. It needs no breaking period. And as you can see here, you got at least another inch to let out the clasp. So you could probably wear this if you had an eight and a half. It's a 22 millimeter strap though, if you need a bigger strap than that. I'm not gonna show the watch on any other straps. It looks great on this strap, so why bother? I'm doing this loom test at night, so no sense in going to the loom room. I'll just do this test on Grogu. As I speed up the time, you can see the indices fade almost immediately, but at least the hands are holding on a little bit and much better than the index dots. Not good loom, but I've seen worse. What do I like about this watch? Well, it's nice to find a monocle homage that is actually an homage and not a fake. I like that it is sturdy and well-built. Solid watch. I like the really thick dome crystal. This crystal is really cool. And I like this perforated leather strap with a deployment clasp. This clasp is, is really good. What are my gripes and groans? Subdial markers don't match the movement. Uh, tiny case back screws look really easy to strip. And the watch is chunky. It's pretty thick and it's pretty heavy. Do I recommend this watch? I'm torn. I really don't like the fact the subdial markers don't match the movement. But there are not a lot of monocle homages out there and at least it is sturdy and well built. If you can live with the subdials, so the rest of the watch is, is really good. So if the subdials bother you, then that is clearly a deal breaker. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Spectin Zone SP0009-1. And I will be back with another unboxing. I know, I told you I'd do at least five more reviews before I do another unboxing. Well, I'm sorry. 
I couldn't resist myself. I found a watch that was really, really, really on sale and really, really, really cheap. So I went ahead and bought it. Bye.